Say it like that. Welcome back. Welcome back to the second installment of our DIY tandem axle 26 foot bumper tow trailer build series. If you watched the first installment, you know that this trailer began life as a deck over. But as you're about to see, that's going to quickly change. After piecing the trailer together into its final height at the end of the last video, I had a few days to observe it and I decided that it was going to be way too top heavy and way too tall when tilted. After revisiting the drawing board and jotting down a few schematics, I concluded that I could reduce the overall weight of my trailer by several hundred pounds and lower the deck height by about 14 inches if I converted from a deck over trailer to a beaver tail. So as you can see, the first order of business was to remove the section of frame rail that was above the wheels. Now fortunately, the plans for the rear pivot didn't change. All the materials I had were still adequate. All of these measurements are checked and then double checked and oftentimes they're checked with multiple items of precision measurement. And I did edit out a lot of the measuring later on in the video. The absolute best and most consistent way to lay out a trailer that's going to track down the road nice and straight and have good consistent tire wear is to triangulate your toe point with your axles and that helps you line your axles up straight underneath that subframe. So what we've got is we've got the tape clamped to the dead center of the tongue and we're coming back here and we're just going to lay out where the axle is going to be on either side of the frame here. And I've switched over from a fat chalk pencil to a scratch awl which is going to give me a very sharp mark. These are the notches where the axles sit. This is a design that I'm copying off the original subframe and I think it is a really good design. Not only does it hold the axle captive, but it also lowers the overall height of the trailer deck a full two and a half inches because the axle is set up into the subframe. Now something that's important to keep in mind when you do make a notch up into a frame rail like this is to use a rounded corner. You don't want a square hard corner. A square corner is very susceptible to stress cracking. And since I wasn't reusing any of the old hardware, I just hacked it all out of there. Now I just wanted to temporarily mock this up so that I could lift the deck and see what my load angle was going to be.
And once I had this thing lifted up, it became quite clear that I had made the right choice. This thing was way too steep to safely load anything larger than a car. And bear in mind, this is with the overall height lowered 14 inches. And now I needed to configure my hydraulics in a way that maximized their lift potential, but also maintained a fair amount of ground clearance. As I mentioned earlier, a great deal of time went into aligning these plates, measuring them, checking them, and rechecking them. And I edited a lot of that out just in order to keep the video short. While the trailer deck frame was still one piece, I wanted to fully weld it to the pivot because this was a foolproof way to maintain alignment once it was fully welded out, then I was able to cut it and everything was perfectly aligned. Now once I knew what full lift and full lower needed to be, then I was able to configure the second end of the hydraulic mounting points. And I knew that I wanted to tie them into at least three cross members to help carry the strain of lifting any significant amount of weight that was ever gonna be on the beaver tail end of the trailer. Now one significant detail that I did neglect to record, and I should mention now, is that when I cut these pinholes in these brackets, I slightly oversized them, and then I came back through with a weldable shaft collar, and I made sure that these hydraulic cylinders were perfectly in sync with each other and aligned, and then I welded the shaft collars on, and those are the mounting points. The shaft collars not only bear all of the weight, but they also double as the pin retainers. Well, the next order of business was to tackle the fenders. I'm just using a salvaged piece of eighth inch diamond plate or tread plate. I've fixed, straightened, repaired, and even replaced quite a few trailer fenders over the years. In my experience, a nice square, boxy, simple design always seems to hold up the best. I've just made a few gouge marks or score marks here with my plasma cutter by moving at a fast pace without cutting all the way through. What this allows me to do is just tack my fender into place and fold it accordingly instead of running it in the brake and then checking fitment and then running back to the brake adjusting and then checking fitment. I can just bend it in place to fit perfectly the first time. As I mentioned earlier, I did buy these axles used, but I was able to run the serial number and find out how much axle travel they have 
And then I was able to set my fenders nice and low, knowing that they weren't going to bottom out. Now you could break an edge or weld on some one inch flat bar onto this fender, but I've had really great luck just using round bar. Nice soft edge, gives it plenty of reinforcement, and it looks nice by the time you're done. What I did here was I got them all tacked into place and then I ran a piece of bar across both fenders to make sure that both tops were perfectly flat and parallel to the trailer deck. Now the front trailer deck is still not welded down to the subframe, but the rear beaver tail is part of the subframe. So I want to do a final mock-up here and let this beaver tail operate under its own power using the hydraulic power unit. This red piece of box tubing is what was keeping that tail suspended prior to the hydraulics being in and pressurized. I'm going to leave that 2x2 two two angle iron partially over the diamond plate, just so I can measure when the tail is in plane with the rest of the deck. Now this is just a single acting hydraulic power pack. It pressurizes only on the upstroke. For the downstroke, it relies on gravity and the weight of the tail. Now according to the calculations that I ran, this tail itself should be able to lift three to four tons, which is more than I'll ever put on it. And that concludes part two. Join us for part three as we wrap up a few last minute details and get into paint and wiring. Not quite at 18 volts. These are 12 volt lights. So that one's definitely working.